Hey guys, this is Daniel and welcome back to another part of the character modeling tutorial and this time I want to show you something quickly just to motivate you and you know annoy you a little bit. So between the last part and this part I kind of branched off this project into a second file and tested some vertex painting and I thought it looked pretty cool so uh, I wanted to share it with you. So that's how our model looks like um, that we created so far with some simple texturing and I was thinking that it went quite it was quite successful everything so far and I wanted to share this quickly um, with some basic light so that's it um, we'll go back to our original file and continue where we left off <coughs> so we have a couple of things left to do for uh, this character so I think most importantly are uh, the eyes and you know the facial features so what I want to do is I'll actually go ahead and bring up here my reference so that I can really focus on the face I mean this is not the most accurate reference anyways it would might be better if you you know open up one of the original uh, one an original art of the character since I'm this is only my interpretation after all and then you can start to you know work on work on the eyes and make them good. So first of all, I want to adjust a few proportional issues. Um, by the way, I will turn this off again because it's kind of distracting me at the moment. Um, okay, so I was thinking that they are a bit too small so I'm trying from this side to move them a bit further apart and that looks a bit better <coughs> so yeah proportional editing is everything <laughs> in these kind of situations you can do lots of things with it And by the way, for those who missed it for some reason, um, okay, for those who missed it, we created here these these hollow areas um, behind the the eyes. So um, basically, I'll talk in this part about why we're doing it. But this is a very good technique that I would recommend you to use. Uh, so if you ha haven't watched that part in which we created it. Make sure you have this hollow area behind your eye. Um, other than that, we have here this edge. I kind of want to make sure though that the upper one at least is a bit sharper than nowhere else because, yeah, just because. I will explain in a second. Okay, maybe we make the edge a bit too large after our. So I'm going back again a little bit. After all, I don't want to destroy the silhouette uh, by any, in any ways. Okay, but I'm fine with that now. Um, be careful about viewing in perspective or orthographic. You see how, how much it can look different. Uh, what I want to do is in perspective, uh, I will change the lens to something like um, 180. And then these two views are a lot more similar to each other. Just that this one has a little bit of perspective and this one hasn't. Uh, so I guess as for mouth and nose, we cannot change too much. Those are, you know, just the shapes. We just have to create eyelids and the, the pupils and some eyebrows. So as for eyelids, I'm going to start by copying these vertices from the eye part. Let's take this one as well, just in case. I'll copy them and separate them into a new object with P. Um, once that's done, let's see if we can work ourselves quickly around that with a solid fee modifier. So I'll add the solid fee before the subdivision surface, make it a bit thicker and set that value to zero so I think I think we can start off with this but 
I mean, it's not our result, of course. So what we are trying to do now is to create um, on that edge an object for the eyelids. And what's so good about this technique is that no matter from which angle you look at it, it will always um, be right next to the eye. You won't see any, you know, skin material below it if you view from a very uh, low angle or something. You will only get to see what you should see. And also you have the chance to move the eye more inside. And that also gives an interesting um, 3D effect. That's, yeah, pretty useful here. Anyways, so right now what we have to do is to kind of recreate this dark line up here. And it can be harder than it might look like uh, since, you know, you don't really... It's hard to really get a good feeling of this object as a 3D model. It's just some kind of some kind of mesh. So I guess it's a good advice to try to keep it thick. Uh, I just remember that I at the beginning I tended to make it too thin and that's why it looked not so good for me. And also we are going to have you know some little eyelashes away from it. So let's try something. Let's try extruding this from here to there. Let's just make sure that the, the polish is not completely uh, random. But it looks already kind of similar. And also you don't have to worry too much about um, the shape of it because I, I mean the whether it is you know smooth or uh, or it has something like this in here because in the end it will be probably shadelessly shaded with the material that has just you know the color of the the hair and things like that so um, a lot of it lots of it can be hidden again later on and you won't see it so okay I'm kind of happy with the result now just a few final things I want to try you know you can play around with this until you're happy but I guess what we had before was better okay last thing I want to do is to fix a few areas that are way too deformed just to make sure everything is even. And that should be good. So we have eyelashes, now we need uh, the pupil. So I will place my 3D cursor somewhere in here. Or no, actually, actually no, I'll center it again, shift. Oh, by the way, sorry, I'm really sorry guys for not displaying the keys. So you can follow along here again. This is the first part in which I forgot, I think. So shift C centers the cursor. Then you want to select the circle and we'll go for something like eight vertices or maybe twelve. And <clears throat> in edit mode I will move them to where the eyes are. Oh, yeah, 90 degrees, of course, and, and somewhere around here. And now you will see how easy it is to actually place those because uh, you have such a big hollow area in the middle. Um, so it's nothing to worry about. You just want to get the eye placement right and you might even have to you know rotate the eyes a little bit to get a good effect from them. 
so you just move them inside and then you extrude them to the front and you know fill them you could do, you could do that with grid fill i think and just change the settings here a little bit yeah why not like this that looks good and then subdivision surface modifier and we have everything we need I'm not sure if we really want that or not but let's just leave it so that we can better see it so maybe it's a bit larger than that but I think you can see already how how the effect kind of shows itself so you see from the side we have pretty good eyelashes and an eye visible and then you turn the camera and you still have them from the front and if you look at it from here you just see more white of the eyes if you don't like that you can you know well, you move the eye to the front and then you have it there and depending on the view you know you get a little bit of shift of the pupil and it makes it just look a little bit more um, real I mean you can't say realistic it's stylized obviously but it looks a bit better in my opinion so Last thing we want to do for this part, probably we'll leave everything else for the next one, is create a lower lid, just something simple. So I copied a loop of the upper one and I'm going to use this to create here this lower lid as well. And if you have also troubles with the normals, just recalculate it. That fixed for me some issues. And then again, make sure that this edge is really inside of, I mean, really covering this entire edge of what's below. So what I'm going to do is make it a bit sharper so that we can make sure of that. And yeah, it might be a bit hard sometimes. Let's see. This looks somewhat wrong still. Maybe maybe you shouldn't be too thick um, for the bottom. So yeah, play around with it if you get it. To look right that's great if not um, play around with it a little more or just use a different technique <coughs> whatever you like to do so I guess after all it has to be a little bit thicker and maybe we can improve it by sharpening it yeah, I think that's a bit of an issue that you're looking at your model at the moment at the shaded uh, in a shaded way and it kind of irritates you it gives you the wrong impression of how things are and once you you know sharpen things they look a bit more different which wouldn't have made a difference in our renders later but it feels better in shaded view. I guess I can be happy with the result at this point. Looks good to me and something we can continue to work with. All right, now I guess since we're already so far, we are going to do the, eye, the eyebrows as well. So let's copy one vertex and extrude it a little bit. Yeah, let's just separate this part into a new one. Uh, here we're going to, well, we don't need a triangle. 
Let's just delete these again. I don't know why I extruded those in first place. So onward vertex, and we're going to snap it to our closest faces with the magnet tool, and then you have to figure out where the eyebrows are. I mean, you could just follow the reference, but I'm not sure how accurate it is once again. So let's just see whether it looks good or not. So let's connect everything. And then you might want to use solid feed. You could. <coughs> and depending on whether you put it above subdivision surface or below, you get a bit of a different result. Just make it so that they barely look through the skin, since we don't need them much further than that. So, well, I think they don't look so good. So we're going to adjust them a little bit. Now this comes back to gets back to you know other skills mainly from drawing to figure out um, what really looks best for this. But actually, this is not bad. <laughs> I expected to struggle a bit more with this, but it seems like we found something acceptable. So there we go, we have now eyes and eyelashes and eyebrows and all the other facial features done and we have hair, um, some parts that are not so detailed yet, we have the body, hands, what else do we need? Oh, feet, yeah, right. I'm really looking forward to that, not. Um, yeah. Anyways, so next part will probably be about modeling feed or about something different, uh, depending on whether I decide to do it after all or not. Uh, it would be a nice thing just because we would have a complete character, you know, uh, like the entire body would be finished. But at the same time, I never enjoyed modeling feed, so. <laughs> Anyways, hope you enjoyed this part and learned something from it. Have a good day and see you in my next part.